Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part nine of my linear algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to talk about vector triangle inequality, which is going to show us another way to find linearly independent or linearly dependent vectors. And I'm also going to talk about graphing three dimensional planes in a 3D coordinate system. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. OK, so the triangle inequality states that the sum of the lengths of any two sides must be greater than the third. So this would work out the C is less than A plus B. Now technically C could actually be equal to A plus B but that would only be if A and B smushed up and actually became C. And how this would translate with vectors is we could have the magnitude of vector A plus vector B is less than or equal to the magnitude of vector A plus the magnitude of vector B. So for example, if we had vector A and it was 1, 2, and 3, this is a 3D coordinate system obviously, and we had B and we gave it values 4, 4, 5, well we would have to first go in here and find the magnitude of A, which would be equal to 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. And we'd have to get the square root of that, which would end up being the square root of 14. We would then get the magnitude for B. Again, this is going to be 4 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. And the square root of that is going to end up being the square root of 57. Well then, if we added together a plus b, this would give us 5, 6, and 8. And if we then took the magnitude of 5, 6, and 8, we'd have 5 squared plus 6 squared plus 8 squared square root which is going to end up being the square root of 125. And if we went and plugged these into our formula, that would then give us the square root of 125 is less than or equal to the square root of 14 plus the square root of 57, which is going to be approximately 11.18 is less than or equal to 11.29. So we can see that indeed that is true and then that tells us that these vectors are linearly independent. We could further verify that by using the Cauchy-Swartz method that we talked about before and that is going to be the absolute value of vector A times B equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B and if we work this out, the absolute value of A times B would be 1 times 4 plus 2 times 4 plus 3 times 15, which is equal to 57. And then we could also find magnitude of A times the magnitude of B, which is equal to the square root of 14 times the square root of 57, which is equal to the square root of 798, which is equal to approximately 28.2. And you can see that most definitely this value here is not equal to this value here, and hence we are, are able to reinforce that yes indeed these vectors are linearly independent. And this brings us to the process of actually going and getting a plane and defining that plane from the vectors in the plane and a vector that is normal to the plane. So I talked about this before, so let's just go and draw a plane in here. Okay, so I went and drew sort of a plane inside of there. It's green. And basically what we know about this is that there are going to be vectors going in multiple different directions, but they are all going to be lying on the face of our plane. All right, so let's draw in here two planes, and there we go. 
And let's go and label these planes. Let's have this be plane A and this be plane B. Might actually help to refer to this as plane not and plane one as well. Or not plane, vector, I mean. So up here, this is vector A, on below it is vector B. Well, the normal vector is going to form at a 90 degree angle to both of these planes. And in the next part of the tutorial, so it's going to look roughly like this, okay? So there is our normal. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'll cover exactly how to calculate all this using the cross product. So if we get the position of the start of the vector, so in that situation, that would be vector A or vector A naught. Well, then we could go and say this would be equal to x naught, y naught, z naught. Okay. And the position of the terminal point of vector A, let's mark this as A naught and we'll mark this as A1, would be, of course, x1, y1, and z1. From this, we can get that vector by subtracting a0 from a1. So this is going to be a1 minus a0, which is equal to, and we can go and get our new vector by saying x1 minus x0, y1 minus y0, and z1 minus z0. And since this vector is perpendicular to the normal vector, then the dot product of our normal and a1 minus a0 are going to be equal to zero. And using this knowledge is going to provide us with the equation of a plane. And I'll work through an example and this will make 100% sense. So you'll have some constant and then you're going to have x1 minus x0 plus a constant. And this constant is going to be the vectors for our normal. So a, b, and c are coming from the values of normal, the normal vector. And z1 minus z0 is equal to 0. And I went and redrew that so that we'll be able to work through this example and have a ton of space. So let's say that a naught in this situation is going to be at the point of 2, 2, 4, and a1 is going to be at the point of 4, 5, 4. Well then, a, b, this vector, is going to be equal to b, x, minus a, x, and b, y, minus a, y, and bz minus az. And if we go and perform that calculation, we find out that its point is going to be at 2, 3, and 0. Well, now we can go and calculate a equation here. So for example, let's say that we know that our normal vector, and in the next part of the tutorial, I'll show you how to calculate the normal, is 3 negative 2, and 5. Well, then we can find the equation for our plane. We're going to take the 3 from the normal. Again, the normal is this red line going up here. And then we'll say x minus, and we're going to take this value right here, a point. And then we'll get the normal again, which is going to be minus 2. y minus 2, which comes from here again, plus 5 y z minus 4 again right there and this is going to be equal to 0 and basically just only with the normal along with a point in the plane we are able to create the entire plane equation if we go and multiply this out this gets 3x minus 6 minus 2y plus 4 plus 5z minus 20 is equal to 0. 
and then we can convert this into 3x minus 2y plus 5z minus 22 is equal to 0. And then we can get our final equation for our plane, which is 3x minus 2y plus 5z is equal to 22. Okay? So that is how you can create an equation for a plane with only the normal vector as well as a point on the plane. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover cross products. And with them, I will show you how to calculate the normal as well as do even more fancy crazy stuff with planes in a 3D coordinate system. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.